Welcome to Sweethearts or Arrivals. I'm Sharla. I'm Justin. What are we doing today? Today we're going to do a waxing philosophical. And before I say the title of the waxing philosophical, what's this mess going on the table? It's a big mess. <laughs> uh, we did our 2017 summer update where we started talking about the changes to the channel. And while we were doing that, instead of just staring at our faces. Although they're cute, I think. Uh, we started doing unboxing of some of the games that we recently got. Uh, right now we are in the middle of unboxing Great Western Trail, which we got from our patrons. Thank you very much. So we're going to finish doing that as we do this waxing philosophical. And pretty much what I'm doing right now, I'm going to be bagging them up. Yeah. And I quickly looked at the rule book. I'm going to, I don't know if this is going to work for, we won't know until we play it the first time. Mm -hmm. All the ones in the same bag, all the twos in the same bag, and all the threes in the same bag. That sounds like it'll work. Yeah. So, what is our topic Our topic today, today is apps or smartphones in games. How do we feel about them? And this was requested for us to do this waxing fill stuff right quite a on. while ago. But thanks for suggesting the topic. Interesting. All right. We're going to have to bag this quickly. How come? I don't know if this is going to take a long time to wax philosophically about it. Why do you say that? Because I don't like apps and phones and such in their games. How come? Because when I start playing a game, I'm like, phone away! But what about the new game for Mansions of Madness? And it's like it organizes your game for you and walks you... Th it's like your game master. That is kind of neat. But I don't know, like... I've only played Mansions of Madness once, mm -hmm. and it wasn't the newest edition. It was the old edition which required someone to run the game. Right. And I honestly don't know if an app could do as good of a job as our friend Ooh, Colin. We're, well, yes, Colin's really good at it. Yeah. It's true. But, see, the people watching aren't going to know how good Colin is, so they have no frame of reference, so we're probably going to get a string of comments saying, no, no, you're wrong. People make errors. The apps are perfect. The whole point of that particular game is to create a narrative experience, mm -hmm. and I, I, I don't know. Like it's it's kind of like a two way street. They could say you're wrong because you don't know how good the app is, and that's true. But they're wrong because they don't know how good Colin is. It's true. Um, at spinning that really good story. So we actually played a specific story that if you did one thing, the game was instantly over and everybody was dead. And of course we did that, like, fairly quickly. Very, like, the third turn. Yeah. So the app would have been like, congratulations, you're all dead, game's over, and then the app would shut down. Ooh. Yes, but technically that's probably what should have happened when we played that game. Yes, but that wouldn't have been all that fun. No, because we would have had to reset it up all over again for another scenario. Right. Yeah. Uh, Colin did something really, really funny, we all got a laugh out of it, and then we continued to play the game and enjoy it. But who knows, maybe in the new edition they've fixed things like that so the app can do it. And there is definitely something to be said for that specific game where Colin didn't get to play. Yes, that's the thing too. So you have to have a person in your group that doesn't mind being the game master. Yeah. Um, for that particular game I would be interested to try out the app version. Running the game. I'm not sure if we have a device that could actually handle the app. That's a big part of the whole apps and stuff and phones and games too. Is We don't have phones. No. Like you have an old Android, yeah. but it's nothing that could run that app. No, I found a app for um, Betrayal on House on the Hill that was free so you could have your character and keep track of its stats without using those fiddly bits that don't ever work. And I had to delete a whole lot of stuff just so it would fit on my old phone. Right. Yeah. So that's another big part. If we had a game that required an app, we probably wouldn't be able to actually download it because we don't have the space. Right. Like, I have an iPod, but it's a 5th gen, and now I can't even upgrade my operating system anymore. Mm. So any apps that are made for the new operating system, I can't have them on my device because yeah. my thing can't run it. That's right. Which is kind of frustrating. So what this all comes down to is, this could all be money spent on more board games instead of updating our phones and stuff. Exactly. I was going to say that exact thing. <laughs> so, there's games like Potion Explosion that you actually have to use an app in the game to play. Obviously, from that little conversation we just had, yep. you're going to know that we're probably not going to get that game because there's going to be almost absolutely no way that we're going to be able to play it. That's right. 
which is unfortunate because yep. that kind of looks like a fun game. Is that what it's called? Potion Explosion? No. I've got the title wrong. That's a new game, I think, with all those marbles that you... Um, I don't know. There, It was The Alchemist. The Alchemist, That's right. That's what it was. They're both about potions, so hopefully you'll forgive me for that. Although I believe that The Alchemist has a way you can play without the apps, but it's a lot of work. I think it's on a PC, so you'd actually have to have like a laptop there with you. I think there is actually a manual way without any electronics at all. Oh, okay. Yeah. But there's like a lot of work involved. Yeah, who wants to work when you're playing a game? That's the reason you play games, so you can escape your work. Yeah. If you have a game that can benefit from an app, that's kind of neat. Like, I was actually really excited to get that Betrayal on House of Hill app because it is a real pain trying to deal with what stats do my characters have. It sure is. And it was a really easy way. I could just have it on my phone and just have it right there, and then I have all my stats. But if your game requires an app, you just lost all my interest. Yeah. Can I interrupt you and get three more of these kind of bags, please? Sure. There you go. Those aren't the same. I'm very particular. I'm going to have to have all the same kind for my people, so I'll dump these in here. Okay, and I'll put those in the bag you are rejecting. Okay. <laughs> so there are some games that I've heard about where your phone is like you put it on the game board and it's actually like... A component. It makes a component. Oh, good. Uh, I know. No, thank We'd you. never be able to play that. No. Nope. For all the reasons we said previously. Yeah. And it's not that we're anti-technology. No, but I we're think there is something really strong about being having so much technology, and that being one of the reasons why board games are making such a resurgence is it's mm -hmm. a, an opportunity for people to put the phones and electronics away mm -hmm. and actually interact right with something that's not digital. Which is such a help for us because we are so introverted mm. that pretty much, unless we have something like this to take our focus, yeah, um, it's really hard for us to interact with people comfortably. Yeah. Like, it's so awkward. And I'm really, like, I'm not I'm not against technology or phones or anything like that, but being a junior high teacher, um, I see students who, during recess and lunch, are hanging out with their group of friends, and all they do is sit in an area yeah. and not interact. And they don't know how to sit and interact with people mm -hmm. because they're just, all of their attention's on the phone. Right. And they have this big group of friends who all share the same interests, staring at their phones, and yet they'll they they'll all, be talking to me about how they don't have any friends yeah, and nobody likes that. them. Yeah. yeah. And it's because they don't get to interact with people and feel like they're friends. Yeah. Which is unfortunate. Yeah. Uh, it's funny that you say that we're not anti-technology, which we're not. We're not anti-technology. Nope. But what I am anti-about is this constant upgrading. Hmm. Like I said, I only got my iPod a few years ago and now it's already outdated. Yeah, it's and just it ridiculous. was like 300 and something dollars to get that. Like, it's just a big money grab. Yeah. And that's what makes me angry about it. All yeah. these have to have the newest, greatest things to be able to do the cool new things. The cool, that's fun just new things. silly. And it's just money after money after money that you're investing in these yeah. things that I could buy more games with. Yeah. <gasps> City of Iron has a second edition. It's upgraded. Let's go buy it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're making that. Oh, I see. <laughs> you confused me. I probably looked really stupid there for a second. But yeah, I get it now. Yeah. Bad joke. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> it does actually look really good, though. <laughs> <laughs> I know. It's a really nice looking game. <laughs> and we did consider buying it. <laughs> yep. But... That's another story for another waxing <laughs> philosophical. <laughs> All right. I think that's pretty shiny. I think we waxed it really good. Right now. Awesome. Thanks a lot. We'll see you in the next video. Laters.